I run an ad agency called Dunn & Company here in Ybor City, and I've been privileged to run this company in this historic cigar factory for the last almost 20 years. This building was built in 1895 by a cigar maker, and just 15 years later, a gentleman from New Orleans came and he bought the building, and he dubbed it the Carina, and he also was a cigar maker. There were over 100 cigar factories like this once in Tampa Bay, and now there's only about 20 of them that are operational, and we're in one of them. And I've been spending the last, I don't know, maybe four years refurbishing the one that we're in. I run my advertising agency out of here. We have 50 people. It's a lot of space for 50 people. That's 36,000 square feet. And with those 36,000 square feet come over 130 original wood windows. And it is a challenge to find somebody who has the craftsmanship ethic to know how to give the right amount of care and love to these windows to make them operational. When I bought the building, probably over half of the windows, if not more, were sealed shut. <laughs> Nailed shut, painted shut, uh, had pieces of wood put in them so they wouldn't open. And what Brian's really been able to help me do is get these windows operational again. And there's a lot of them here and they're quite valuable, so it's not the kind of thing that you really want to have to replace a whole lot of. It would cost me an arm and a leg. It's more efficient and more affordable for me to just get the ones that I've got working. Well, to get those working, you got to have somebody who knows the mechanics of these. Sometimes they've got uh, ropes and, and barbells in the windows that help the sashes go up and down. Sometimes you've got chains, and this isn't something, it's kind of like having a mechanic go work on a 1965 MG midget. They don't even know where to start. You know, I don't get this car, where's the computer? And somebody like Brian's got a specific expertise in how to work on these windows. So it's been fantastic to have a partnership with him over the last year. Uh, this is the main entrance where deliveries would be made. Business people would come in and out. It's the front of the building on the west side. This is the main staircase. These are some heavy windows. I imagine this thing probably weighs about 55 pounds. And for that reason, they have some extra big weights on the other end of the chain. And you wouldn't want to use ropes on a window like this. It is so heavy, if a rope snapped, that thing would just come down like a guillotine. So we're going to use chains here today. And when you feed the chain in, you want to make sure that the uh, loop end of it is down here at the sash level. And this is called a spiral. And I'm going to put the spiral in this little provision that's actually would otherwise be for the knot of the rope but today since we're using chains it is going to uh, accommodate that spiral and uh, when these things go up and down I don't want that spiral to twist out of there so I'm going to come in here with a couple of screws and that will give us an added measure of assurance that that chain won't hop out of the provision in the edge of the sash. In order to keep slack on the chain up at the other end where the roller is, I just simply bent a nail over and I put that in the chain so that the chain wouldn't fall back into the frame. Now I've got to remove that. There it is. Now our sash is perfectly balanced. I ordered these regulation size, but for some reason the frame is a little oversized in width. I don't want there to be a lot of play side to side when that window goes up and down. So I've put these little window control springs on. Since there's one on each side, I'm going to slip this piece of sheet metal in here and use it as a shoehorn 
to push the sash into position. It doesn't take much to push that window all the way up. Pull it all the way down. At this juncture, I normally would put the lower sash in. I can't really put the lower one in until I cut another piece of parting. So we need to make some parting stops. Something that looks like this. It's a half an inch in width this way, and it's a full one inch width in this direction. I need one that's about 94 inches. And what I'm gonna do is uh, take a piece of this dry pressure treated decking it's already an inch thick i just need to rip some half inch strips off of this and i'm going to begin by taking that rounded edge off i'm going to put my rip guide in i'm going to make a mark at half an inch What I'm going to do is take a block plane and I'm just going to smooth the edges. Well, it's time for a break. What a perfect way to take a break in Ybor City. That's a little sub-city in Tampa, Florida. Ybor City uh, was a community within a community. The wave of immigration that occurred from 1880 through 1923 brought a lot of um, Spanish and Italian immigrants to this country and they set up their own little community here. The uh, driving force of that, of the economy was tobacco which would come in from Cuba and it would be offloaded at the port and it's just a few blocks from here. People were employed in making cigars here in Tampa from 1880 through 1960. There were at one time around 15 to 25,000 people making cigars in Tampa and we are at the Carina cigar factory here. This dates back to the 19th century and it's a, a long building of three stories. All of these cigar factories were built from east to west to take advantage of the sunlight on the south side of the building. The whole place is nothing but windows and there was more than enough available light for the workers to do what they had to do during the day. Actually these tobacco workers were very well educated and very well informed. They would have a lector come and read the newspaper to them in three different languages while they peacefully rolled cigars. Uh, Ybor City has always had a reputation for being a place where artists and intellectuals hang out to discuss their art and intellect. And it also is a place where revolutionaries came to seek support for the uh, Cuban Revolution, which occurred in the late part of the 19th century. Jose Marti came here and many of the uh, seeds that uh, brought about the Cuban Revolution were fomented right here in Ybor City. So it's always had a, a history of um, art, intellect, and revolution. In about the year 1959, there was another revolution in Cuba. As a result of that, the tobacco, which once came into the ports of Tampa from Cuba, was cut off and the entire economy of Tampa and Ybor City especially suffered. 
we were no longer able to obtain the tobacco to make the cigars. So the cigar industry pretty much dried up. A lot of it relocated in the Dominican Republic and Honduras, but it took years to bounce back from that. Uh, however, a lot of the uh, tobacco that's grown in the Dominican Republic and Honduras finds its way here. And uh, there's quite a few uh, of these old cigar factories that are still rolling cigars, but a good many of them are still made by hand, just as they were 100 years ago. I've got to get back to work. There's no smoking allowed in the building, by the way. And as soon as I'm done working, I've got to go get a haircut. We can go upstairs and I can run you through some of the bases of window restoration, or should I say, the basics. You have to bring the upper sash all the way down. Feed this little tail end of the parting stop in and get behind this little notch in the check rail. put our lower sash in. That's a heavy beastard, I'm telling you. My chain is uh, blocked off up at the top. So I'm just gonna I put my spiral on the end of the chain and I'm gonna put it in the little, little hole. And I'm gonna take a sprue that's about one inch long We'll put a couple of screws in. Just to make sure in the operation of this window that chain stays in place. And I'm gonna put the tension back on this chain by removing that little bent nail. And as a safeguard, I doubled up with what's called a hitch pin, just in case because I don't want to have to go in behind this window frame and fish that chain out. The sash is balanced on one side and all we have to do is attach the chain on the other. So while I've got slack in the chain, it makes it a lot easier to do this. That's not always the case. Sometimes there isn't any slack in the chain. I'm going to put a second screw in place. You know, just for good measure, I'm going to put a third screw in. This one's a little bit longer because the hole is wallered out. And you can see this is rather loose fitted in here. So really all that's holding this chain onto the sash are these screws, which it's an added measure. These windows on the second floor are a little bit over eight feet in height and they're 52 and a half inches in width. That's a monumental size for a window like this. The ones on the first floor are even bigger. So I, I've got to go up the ladder and retrieve that little pin hitch and the bent nail and put the tension on this chain so that it's, it suspends the sash and functions in its intended manner. This one fits a little bit better than that upper one. And uh, I won't say it goes up with one finger, but it goes up and down with two fingers. <clears throat> the sill was so rotted, I was unable to reuse the sill. If I had to chip it out, it was just pulverized with water damage for the past hundred years. And it fits pretty good. It, it goes over and down onto the uh, limestone sill. And then it comes up at a 10 degree angle. And then it bends up onto the uh, inside, which is called the uh, window stool ledge. It's not rotten down here, but it's starting to get a little punky, I'd say. So I took a piece of 20 gauge sheet metal and I'm gonna glue this piece of sheet metal on here. And I think 
By doing so, we can forestall a rather expensive repair. The job would not be complete without the perimeter stops. So I'm going to put some soap on them. You see they, they have nails already, so I don't use anything but this S-Wing hammer. I just got so sick and tired of wood handles breaking on me. Before I put the sash in place, I buttered it up pretty good with, with this soap. It's even a good idea to put some soap down here because the kind of paint that they use these days is different than the paint they used when this building was erected. This paint that they use today is water-based and it has a rubber feel to it. It acts like a cement or a glue and it does not really allow wooden pieces to move freely. So that's why I put the soap on the window sash and on the edge of the uh, perimeter stop. And I even soaked the entire frame. You want to put these in so that there's a little bit of play to allow the window to go up and down. And you also have to anticipate what the humidity is going to be. This is a dry time of year, so there's not a lot of humidity in the air. But in the summertime, it gets quite humid down here. Now, you want to make sure the window will function. It's got plenty of room. As it goes up, it doesn't hurt it a bit if there's this much play in it. When it's down, you don't want nearly that much. This building was never airtight. Uh, these windows are rather loose fitted and they were always that way. After all, this is Florida, so the climate down here is so mild that this building was meant to breathe so the, the workers would just open these windows up and the place stayed rather cool most of the day so you know we're we're not trying to make this an airtight building we're actually making a big celebration out of the fact that it is not an airtight building by opening the windows we're going to use mother nature to regulate the temperature well, I'm Brian with Historic Woodwork and sure appreciate your interest and uh, hope to see you soon.